Okay, how are y'all doing today? Um, so today uh, we're going to read uh, Paul Robeson. Paul Robeson is a, um, I mean, he was a singer, but he was also known for his, uh, you know, political involvement. If you've ever heard a, uh, the uh, Soviet Union national anthem sang in English, it was probably by Paul Robeson. Uh, Paul Robeson uh, was a black American, and a lot of his struggle included, uh, or a lot of his work included, you know, liberation for black Americans. Um, he, you know, there's a, a really good recreation of, um, or a really good, uh, yeah, like a, a, a recreation almost of his, of him having to stand on trial before the uh, un-American, see, it's called like the Court of Un-American Activities. Uh, you know, for his visits to the Soviet Union and his, basically his praise for, you know, the Soviet Union that he had. And it's, it was, uh, who does his voice in the, in the uh, audio recreation is uh, James Earl Jones. And because, you know, Paul Robeson was a baritone and James Earl Jones obviously is also, has a very, you know, baritone voice. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to read about uh, Paul Robeson. I, I feel like he doesn't get near the amount of um, attention, like, I guess, modern attention in today in the United States, he's not brought up near enough as he should be, because he was, um, he did a lot of work internationally, <clears throat> he, um, you know, he, 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 you know, even back when he was alive, you know, in times like, you know, like during the World War II, or during World War II, he was talking about, you know, the United States' imperialism across the world, and he was a, very much against fascism, so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and read this. <clears throat> Paul Robeson, thoughts on winning the Stalin Peace Prize. <clears throat> so he was awarded the Stalin Peace Prize. And yeah, this is, this is his thoughts on winning this, the Stalin Peace Prize. <clears throat> <clears throat> Many friends have asked me how it feels to have received one of the International Stalin Prizes for strengthening peace among peoples. Usually I say, as most prize winners do, it's a great honor, but of course this award deserves more than just passing acknowledgement. Through the years, I have received my share of recognition for efforts in the fields of sports, the arts, the struggle for citizenship for, for black people, labor's rights, and the fight for peace. No single award, however, involved in so many or such grave issues as this one. The prize is truly an international award. The committee of judges includes the Soviet a a Academician D.V. Skolbelsen, President Vice President Kuo Mujo of China, and Luis Aragon of France, and the following members. Martin Anderson, Nexo, the greatest modern Danish, Danish humanist, John Bernal of England, Pablo Neruda of Chile, one of the world's greatest poets, Jan Dimborski of Poland, Michael so Sato Vignani of Romania, and A.A. A. Fadiev, a leading Soviet no novelist. And the prize winners include outstanding figures from many lands. It is a matter of pride to share the award with such distinguished leaders of Vies Farge of France, Seyfuddin Kishlu, spokesman of, for the All-Indian Congress of Peace, Eliza Branco, a leader of the... Uh, Federation of Brazilian Women, jo Johannes Beck Beckscher, one of the foremost writers of the German Democratic Republic, Reverend James Endicott, fearless Canadian minister and fighter for peace, and Ilya Ehrenberg, the leading Soviet novelist and journalist. Most important, it must be clear that I cannot accept this word in a personal way in the words of an editorial written by A.A. Fedeev and Pravda. The names of the laureates of international Stalin Prizes are again witnesses to the fact that the movement for peace is continuously growing, broadening, and strengthening. In the ranks of the active fighters against the threat of war, new millions of people of every race and nationality are taking their place, people of the most wide, widely deferring political and religious convictions. The awards to, Eli to Eliza Bronco and Paul Robeson reflect the important historical fact that broader and broader sections of the masses of the Western Hemisphere are rising to struggle for freedom and independence, for peace and progress. Peoples that endure the full weight of the attempts of imperialist reaction to strangle the movement of the masses against a new pillaging war being prepared by American billionaires and millionaires. I accept the award 
Therefore, in the name on behalf of these new millions who are moving into the organized fight for peace in our hemisphere, and especially in the United States, one of the most decisive steps in the development of the peace movement in our country was taken in connection with the Peking and Vienna Congresses of Peace. The American peace movement reached out its hands across the borders to join with the millions of peace fighters in the world peace movement. Gradually, it has become crystal clear that the mighty strength of the world movement, representing peoples of all lands, is strength for us here. As Americans, preserving the best of our traditions, we have the right, nay the duty, to fight the participation in the forward march of humanity. We must join with the tens of millions all over the world who see in peace our most sacred responsibility. Once we are joined together in the fight for peace, we will have to talk to each other and tell the truth about each other. How else can peace be won? I have always insisted and will insist even more in the future on my right to tell the truth as I know it about the Soviet peoples of their deep desires and hopes for peace, of their peaceful pursuits of reconstruction from the ravages of war. <coughs> as in historic Stalingrad and to tell of the heroic efforts of the friendly peoples in Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Albania, Romania, Bulgaria, Great New China, and North Korea. To explain, to answer the endless falsehoods of the warmongering press with clarity and courage. In this framework, we can make clear what coexistence means. It means living in peace and friendship with another kind of society, a fully integrated society where the people control their destinies, where poverty and illiteracy have been eliminated, and where new kinds of human beings develop in the framework of a new level of social living. The telling of these truths is an important part of our work in building a strong and broad peace movement in the United States. Like any other people, like fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters, in every land, when the issue of peace or war has been put squarely to the American people, they have registered for peace. Whatever the confusions, however great the hysteria, millions voted for the Stockholm petition, millions more wanted to. At every step, the vast majority have expressed horror at the idea of an aggressive war. In fact, because of this deep desire for peace, the ruling class leaders of this land from 1945 on stepped up the hysteria and propaganda to drive into American minds the false notion that danger threatened them from the East. This propaganda began before the blood of precious human beings stopped flowing in the mighty struggle against fascism. I myself was in Europe in 1945, singing to the troops, and already one heard rumblings of the necessity of America's preparing for war against the Soviet Union, our, gall our gallant ally. And at home, in the United States, we found continued and increased persecution, first leaders of the Communist Party, and then of all honest anti-fascists. But the deep desire for peace remained with the American people. Wallace was held by vast throngs when he resigned from Truman's cabinet in protest against the warmongering of then Secretary of State James Burns. Now the black, now the black hating governor of South Carolina. Seven to eight million peace lovers put Wallace on the ballot in almost all of the 48 states in 1948. The cry for peace forced Truman to take over, demagogically of course. The Progressive Party platform. In addition, he hinted he would send Vincent, one of his trusted lieutenants, to Moscow to talk peace. We know how Truman betrayed the American people and their hopes for peace, and how he betrayed black people and their thirst for equal rights. How he tore up the Bill of Rights and subjected the whole American people to a reign of FBI terrorization. The Korean War has always been an unpopular war among the American people. We remember the unforgivable trickery in the use of the United Nations to further the purposes of, the, of American century imperialists in that land quite comparable to the taking of Texas from Mexico, the rape of Cuba, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, and Hawaii. At one point, American peace sentiment helped to stop Truman from pursuing the use of the atom bomb in Korea and helped force the recall of MacArthur. Yet in 1952, the American people again allowed themselves to be taken, and this time by Eisenhower. He too promised in the campaign to do all he could to end the Korean slaughter. The vote shows that millions of Americans, mil millions of Americans believed him, but already he has betrayed their trust and moves as fast as possible toward an extension of, of the war. There are real threats of attempting to support France on a major scale in Indochina. 
All this comes as no surprise if one looks at those who guide him. Dula is one of the architects of the whole Far Eastern policy. Dewey, the man who so feared in 1948, and certainly unchanged the whole array of American big business at its worst. All of these factors became, become increasingly clear to great sections of the American people, and certainly present a tremendous challenge to the peace forces in this land. If we move swiftly, correctly, courageously, a mighty, unit, a mighty, united, a mighty united front of the people can be built for peace. The latent but growing sentiment can be harnessed, organized. I am especially confident that the black people can be won. That black people can be won for the fight for peace. Having voted mainly for Stevenson, they have little to expect from Eisenhower. Especially, and Eisenhower partly depended upon the Dixiecrat South, sworn enemies of black people. We know that war would mean an end to our struggle for civil rights. FEPC, the right to vote an anti-lynching anti -lynching law, abolition of segregation. And today, black people watch Africa and Asia and closely follow the liberation struggles of the rising peoples in these lands. We watch the United Nations and see the USA join with the Western imperialist nations to, to stifle the liberation struggles. We cannot help but see that it is Vyshinsky and the spokesman of the Eastern European People's Democracy who defend and vote for the interests of the African and Asian peoples. I know that if the peace movement takes its message boldly to black people, a powerful force can be secured in pursuit of the greatest goal of all mankind, and the same is true of labor in the great democratic sections of our population. Yes, peace can and must be won to save the world from the terrible destruction of World War III. The prize which I have just received will spur me on to greater efforts than ever before to serve the cause of peace and to aid in building a triumphant peace movement in the United States. Okay, so that is, um, that was Paul Robeson. You know, some, let's see some points after this. You know, he, he's talking about how unpopular the Korean War was. You know, in the Korean War, the United States, you know, we had a, a general like brag about how the United States killed a fifth of the people in North Korea. Every family, on average, every family in North Korea lost a family member to a bomb. I think this is interesting because this is during the Korean War, and he starts to say, um, he almost, like, I mean, he predicts the Vietnam War, in a sense. He, uh, let me see if I could find this. There are real threats of attempting to support France on a major scale in Indochina. So, you know, as, as, uh, as basically as Vietnam, as Ho Chi Minh led Vietnam to uh, becoming, an in, like, a, to decolonize from France, you know. The U.S. obviously, you know, immediately tried to attack Vietnam after that war and tried to enforce imperialists. They installed a puppet regime in South Vietnam. And it, it, it's kind of what he predicted there. He said, we're looking at the U.S., you know, helping France. And it did turn into... Uh, a war that dropped twice as many bombs on Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam than all of World War II combined, which is an insane amount of bombs. And they're still dealing with finding bombs in those areas, you know, insane when in, in Korea, North Korea. Yeah, this is a, a very great American hero named Paul Robeson. And I, I do hope that, you know, you, you look up Paul ropes in and study him uh, because he, um, he he's one of and especially if you live in the United States because that's he, he is very much a contributor to liberation movement here in the United States that our schools and our media and our you know government tried to erase you know from our from our minds from our memories but they won't be able to do that okay well, thank y'all. I hope y'all have a great day. You know, uh, follow me on Facebook, uh, Mark Sasa, Twitter is Mark Sasa, TikTok, Mark Sasa, YouTube, Mark Sasa. Subscribe, hit me, you know, message me with any ideas you have, you know, if you want to get involved or if you want to um, reach out, if you want to, if you have any advice or anything, if you want to recommend anything, just feel free to message me on any of those platforms. That will be available. So, uh, yeah, and thank y'all. Dodalgoi.